May there always be work for your hands to do. May your purse hold a coin or two. May the sun shine warm on your window pane. May a rainbow follow each rain. May the hand of a friend be always near you. And God fill your heart with gladness to cheer you. I've used that Irish saying as our benediction from time to time in this church. Maybe you re recognize it. What makes it Irish, other than being found on a website called GaelicMatters.com? Well, I guess it has to do with the common Irish mythology. Sunshine, following a rainbow to a pot of gold, and finding your way in a cheerful manner. It also celebrates God's presence in our life. That is a bedrock of Irish thinking, and that's what we're going to honor today. Yes, I'm aware that St. Patrick's Day is coming and gone now by five days, and that I probably should have preached this sermon last Sunday, but call me slow in the draw. But beyond that, whenever you want to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, there is a problem. It comes smack in the middle of Lent. If you enjoy green beer, like myself, and have watering lips for corned beef and cabbage with plenty of boiled potatoes on the side, we're also supposed to be observing Lent, season of contemplation and restraint. How nice, then, to realize that rather being an all-night parade of leprechauns, pints of Guinness, and all things green, St. Patrick's Day, in its purest form, celebrates the life and mission of a tireless bishop named Patrick and of Ireland's acceptance of Christianity. St. Patrick's Day is firmly rooted in the church. Patrick is said not to have been a native of his adopted land, but perhaps born in Scotland or Wales. When he was 16, he was working in his father's field when an Irish militia raided the land. Patrick was kidnapped and carried off as a slave to Ireland. There he worked as a herdsman, remaining captive for six years. He found comfort praying out in the field. He wrote, Every day I had to tend sheep, and many times I prayed. The love of God came to me more and more, and my faith was strengthened. I felt no harm. The spirit within me was quite fervent. After six years, Patrick escaped by stowing away on a ship and finally returned home. He entered the priesthood, but went, what he really felt called to do was to become a missionary, to go back to the land which had enslaved him and share the grace and love of Jesus Christ. So in the latter part of the 5th century, just 400 years after Christ, Patrick, became instrumental in bringing Christianity to Ireland. Others tried to bring the faith there before him. But as Donna said in the children's sermon, the Irish people could not grasp the concept of Trinity, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To them it sounded, at best, like polytheism, and at worst, like nonsense. So Patrick relied on a simple illustration. It worked wonders. He used a shamrock, or a three-leaf clover, the symbol of national pride in Ireland. Each leaf is separate and distinct, yet part of the whole. It's one clover, yet with three individual leaves. Each part has something that the other doesn't have. By using that simple comparison, countless Irish men and women
gave their lives over to the Lord. Thus, St. Patrick's Day is a celebration of St. Patrick, who died on March 17th. We don't know his actual birthday, but we do know the day of his second birthday, his birthday in heaven. Now, we're not all called to be missionaries. None of us are likely to be responsible for bringing Christianity to a country that had rejected it for centuries. But, like St. Patrick, we are responsible for sharing the grace and love of Jesus Christ with the people around us. In five different books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, Jesus gave his disciples a vital mission. It's known in the book of Matthew as the Great Commission. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Most of us don't realize that the Greek verb translated to go is actually not a command. Rather, it's a present participle and should be translated more fluidly as in the process of going. So essentially, Jesus is saying, while you are going, wherever you are going, when in the process of going, make disciples. Make evangelism a part of who you are. May your neighbors respect you, troubles neglect you, angels protect you, and heaven accept you. There's three general ways of doing this, of sharing your faith, that I would like to bring to mind this morning. All of us should be able to relate to at least one, and who knows, perhaps to all three ways. Think of them as the three leaves of the shamrock, each one part of the whole. Let's start with what I call the intellectual approach. St. Patrick often had to reason with people and convince them intellectually that there is a God, that God exists as the all that was, all that is, and all will ever be. Though his weapon of choice was the shamrock, the real battle took place in the minds and hearts of the Irish people. Same as when we need to explain our faith from a logical or a factual standpoint. 1 Peter 3 teaches, Always be ready to answer everyone who asks you to explain about the hope that you have, but answer in a gentle way and with respect. So tell them that God is creator and ruler of the universe, that God is the complete dimension of reality above us, before us, beside us, and inside of us. That God acts as the consciousness in every cell of our bodies, as well as in our souls. That God extends from our deepest, most remote, most innermost thought to the outer limits of the physical universe and beyond. We can also tell them that Jesus lived a sinless life. He offered himself as the perfect sacrifice for the sins of people by dying on the cross. That by raising from the dead after three days, it demonstrates his power over sin and death. And we can tell them that the Holy Spirit is co-equal with God in Christ. The Spirit provides Christians with power for living, for understanding truth, and guides us in what's doing right. It's our eternal source energy. We can tell them that we're saved through a free gift called grace. It's not something we earn, but it's something we awaken to. And we back it up by actions of gratitude. Salvation is the knowing and understanding that we can never be separated May your blessings outnumber the shamrocks that grow, and may trouble avoid you, 
wherever you go. The second leaf on our shamrock could be called the invitational approach. The invitational approach is simple and easy. It's the one modeled by the disciple Philip in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, in which Philip went to look for his friend Nathaniel and told him, we have found the very person Moses and the prophets have been writing about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, explained Nathaniel. Can anything good ever come from Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, Philip replied. So Philip doesn't argue with his friend. He doesn't give a persuasive speech. He simply tells him, come and see for yourself. And that's what every single one of us should be doing. All it takes is an invitation. According to a study by Lifeway Research, 82% of unchurched people say they are at least somewhat likely to attend a service if only someone would invite them. You need to be that someone. And don't say, why don't you come to church sometime? Because that's too vague and open-minded. Instead, say, come to church with me this morning at 1030 at Annandale Reformed Church. Give them a specific date to plan around. People don't like showing up somewhere new, feeling out of place, or being greeted by strangers. So tell them that you'll pick them up. Tell them that you'll at least meet them out at the parking lot. Front doors of churches can be foreboding, and we have to show people that they really aren't. May luck be your companion. May friends stand at your side. May history remind us of Ireland's faith and pride. May God bless us with happiness, and may love and faith abide. And the third and final leaf of our shamrock is the interpersonal approach. The interpersonal approach simply means to share your story, your personal story about how you came to know Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul did in Acts 22. Paul was in Jerusalem and arrested for inciting riots among the groups both for and against him. He pleaded with the commanding officers until they let him address the crowd. And he told them, I am a Jew, just like you are. I am thoroughly trained in the law, and I'm just as zealous for God as any of you. I used to persecute the followers of Jesus to their death. But when I was on the road to Damascus, a bright light from heaven shone down before me. I fell to the ground, blind, and heard a voice saying to me, I am Jesus the Nazarene. Why are you persecuting me, Saul? I repented and regained my sight after a devout man named Ananias told me to wash away my sins in baptism and to call on the name Jesus. That was Paul's testimony. You've got one too. We all do. So go on out and tell them what your life was like before Jesus, how you came to faith and committed your life, and the difference that Jesus has made in your life. Sharing your story is an essential part of sharing your faith. You're an authority on your own life. And it's hard to argue with personal experience. Personal stories are easy to relate to. They're emotional. Many people won't accept the authority of the Bible, but will listen to a humble personal story. What is your story of how you came to know Jesus? Write it down. Break it into three main parts. Memorize it. Practice saying it and, and think of yourself as saying it to others. 
personal testimony may mean more to someone than all the sermons that a hard-working, well-meaning, much-traveled minister will ever lob at you from this or any other poem. So share your shamrock. That's how we grow God's family. And don't get discouraged. Jesus warned that, every, that not every heart is fertile soil. But just keep spreading those seeds. Rip open that bag and toss those seeds around. Not every seed germinates, but a lot do. Every Christian needs to be responsible for following in St. Patrick's footsteps, for sharing his or her own shamrock. Try it. You may be good at it. And as you share your faith, may the luck of the Irish 